what's this stupid idea that's got into your head, eh? Roaming the world like any ragamuffin good for nothing. What'll you be thinking of next? I want to travel, Father. You want to travel? Look here, young man. Where do you think travel's going to get you? You'll end up in some distant country where there's nobody but a band of savages. And what do you think I, your father, will look like when the news comes through that my son, Robinson Crusoe, has ended his days in a cannibal stomach? A fine thing that'll be. But, Father, please let me explain. Listen, I've given you a good education. Well, that should be enough for you. Come on now. What do you think of a position in the town clerk's office? He's wanting a clerk, you know. I'm sorry, Father, but I'm not staying here. I'm going off on a ship. I've never come across anyone with such a stubborn head as you have. You're still a minor, Robinson, and don't you forget it. Of the two of us, it isn't going to be you who's going to have the last word. You want to come on board my ship, Mr. Robinson? That's right, sir. Well, I'll take you. Have you any money? About 40 pounds. Now, well, let me give you a piece of advice. Buy a lot of cheap odds and ends, like highly colored beads, combs, necklaces. The natives can't resist them, and what's more, they pay for them with gold dust. Ooh. <laughs> now, off you go, my lad. And don't forget, we set sail tomorrow at dawn. Nothing so beautiful as the sea, Captain. Oh, aye. <laughs> On condition that you don't come across anybody unpleasant. Ship to starboard! John. Aye, aye, Captain. My telescope. Aye, aye, Captain. Yes, I'm not at all happy about meeting ships in these waters. Why is that, Captain? Oh, the African coasts are dangerous. More often than not, it's a pirate that you come across. Here's your telescope, Captain. Thank you. Ah, it's a three-master trim for racing. What country is it from? Give her my timbers, Turkey. It is a pirate. Every man we Hand ourselves over to you, Captain. <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. Muhammad Rakud Allah. Oh, you are my prisoners. Chain them all up and throw them down to the bottom of the hole. <laughs> oh, this is a good piece of work we've done today. I'll get a good price for all this lot in the market at Sati. Uh, you. What's your name? Robinson Crusoe. Well, Robinson Crusoe, I'm going to take you into my service. From now on, you're my slave. <laughs> So sad, Robinson. You got long face. I've spent two long years as selling slave now. If only I could get my freedom back. Freedom? What's that, Robinson? Ah, poor Zuri. How can you be expected to know you were born a slave? Uh, oh, watch out! Uh, Here comes Sidi Salim. Still spending your time talking, you two. By Allah, I'm too good to you. But we'll soon change that! Oh! <laughs> Robinson, listen to me. Tomorrow I'm taking some friends out on a fishing and hunting expedition. You must put some food into a boat with three guns 
shot and powder. And you must put a compass in too. Take Zuri with you and go and scrub the deck carefully. Go on now. Get on with it. Me tired. Me always work. Me poor nigger. No lucky. Well, that's the slave's life, Zuri. Oh, if only we were free. When man fee, man no work, Zuri one feed on. What would you do if you were free, Zuri? If me free, me my nice negress who make nice food for Zuri. <laughs> me eat well, drink well, sleep well all day. <clears throat> Be quiet. Here comes Ismail. Slaves. Hoist the sail. We're leaving now. Oh, we've got to wait for city salad. Quiet, slave. My cousin Selim's guests won't arrive before this evening. We're going out to get some fish for their dinner. Let's get out to sea. This is the chance I've been waiting for. Be ready to do anything I ask. Fishing no good, C.D. Ismail. You're a pair of worthless scoundrels. I'll have you whipped till the blood runs. Now's the time to act, Zuri. Me understand. Come see, C.D. Ismail. Come see big fish. Biggest fish Zuri ever see. Fish with big red nose, four legs, and ears like banana leaves. Slave, you're making fun of me. Zuri, speak truth, C.D. Ismail. Look in water. I can't see anything. Lean more to see. Lean more to see, see the Ishmael. You're talking nonsense, slave. Here, what are you doing? Stop pushing me or I'll be in the water. Ishmael, horrible, see the Ishmael, go yeah, make big go splash. Me. Let go of me, you filthy scum. Ah! <sighs> I'll have you skinned alive. Robinson. Robinson, help me get back on board. I don't wish you any harm, City Ismail. But I warn you, if you come near this boat, I'll split your skull open with the butt of this gun here. By Allah. Well, the shore's not far away. You can swim there. <laughs> Thirsty, Owen son. Me one drink. We'll go on shore and try and find some fresh water. Me fighting, Robinson. Me see naked savages on the coast. If you me land, you me eaten. All right then. We'll put it off till later. I'm going to sleep now. You take the rudder. If you see a ship, wake me up. You not sleep, Robinson. Why shouldn't I go to sleep? If you sleep, go see big ship over there. What? Ship? We're saved! We're saved! In a few hours, we will reach All Saints Bay. What are you intending to do, Herr Robinson? I'm going to find a job in Brazil, Captain. No, ja, natürlich, aber Sie haben kein Geld. I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, but you have no money. Look, I'll buy your Negro slave for 60 gold pieces. Oh, Zuri, help me to get my freedom back, Captain Effman. It wouldn't be a very honorable thing for me to oh, do. Oh, your scruples are stupid, Herr Robinson. Take this gold. Oh, no. I... I promise to free this boy in ten years' time. What do you say to that, Zuri? If me no see Sidi Selim, me happy. Oh, they're good, they're good. Take this piece of paper, Herr Robinson. It's got the address of one of my friends written on it. He's a planter in Brazil. 
Go and see him and tell him I sent you. Captain Effman did very well in sending you to me, Senor uh, Robinson. I'm always in need of intelligent boys. Well, why is that, sir? I need people for my plantations, so I've devised a little plan. But I must ask you to keep it secret. Oh, that's all right. You can count on me. Bueno. Well, it's like this. Together with a few friends, I've equipped a ship so that we can get Negroes from New Guinea. The uh, government doesn't know anything about all this. We'll get the natives on board, discreetly, you know, and we'll bring them back here to work on my plantations. But that's slave trading. Maybe it is, but it's good business and it brings in a lot of money. And you want me to go with you? Claro. I need a chief clerk. If you accept my proposition, you come with me tomorrow. If you refuse, you die of hunger in Brazil. <sighs> oh, I've got no choice. I accept. I knew you were an intelligent boy. I've never seen a storm like this before. We're running alongside an island. Perhaps we could get on shore. Watch out for that sandbag! My companions had lost their lives in the storm. I found myself on an unknown island, without food, fresh water or weapons. It seemed as if I was going to starve to death or become the prey of wild beasts. The first thing I did was to look for water, and I was lucky enough to find a stream which enabled me to quench my thirst. And then as night was approaching, I climbed up a tall tree, found as comfortable a position as I could, and soon fell into a deep sleep. When I woke up, there was no sign of the storm, and the ship had been brought to within a mile of the shore by the tide. If we had all stayed on board, no lives would have been lost. And as it was, I was the only one left. There was a mountain not far from where I was, and I climbed up it, not without difficulty. And when I looked all around me, my heart sunk. Rough, uncultivated ground everywhere, the sea encircling everything, no sign of human life. I was on a desert island. Tears came to my eyes. And then I took hold of myself, reprimanding myself in these words. Come on, my lad, whimpering won't get you anywhere. God alone knows how long you're going to stay here. And if you don't want to sink into despair or madness, there's only one thing for you to do. Work. I'd made up my mind to do this. 
I swam out to the ship and explored it from top to bottom. In the captain's cabin, I found a telescope and a Bible. In the storeroom, there were provisions in plenty. And in the carpenter shop, all sorts of tools which would be very useful. When I visited the powder room, I found three guns, seven muskets, bullets, lead and powder, as well as an old sword, enough to withstand a siege. I made a raft out of some planks and took my booty back to the shore. During the days which followed, I returned to the ship regularly and brought back with me iron levers, chests, empty barrels, blankets, a hammock, and all the ship's sails. I would have brought back a lot of other things, but 13 days after I had been shipwrecked, another storm carried the ship out of my sight. Far from being worried over this loss, I said to myself, Robinson, you took from the ship everything that could possibly be of use to you. You've got tools. Use them to improve your situation. If you do that, you won't have time to be sorry for yourself. The first thing I did was to drive a post into the ground near the sea. To the post, I fixed a cross made of planks, and I put the following inscription on the cross. I landed here on September the 30th, 1659. I decided to make three different sorts of notches on the post. Small ones for the days, slightly bigger ones for the weeks, and big ones for the months. And in that way, I would have a calendar kept constantly up to date. To protect myself from the wild animals, supposing that there were some on the island, I chose a rock at the foot of which I erected a tent, which I surrounded with a double palisade of stakes. Then I hollowed out the rock with my iron bar and made a spacious cave, which served me as dining room, kitchen and cellar. And lastly, I made myself a table and a chair. All this involved a lot of work, and it took me a year or more to carry it out. I had thrown away the corn, which had been half eaten by rats, and I was surprised to find one day that it had given good seeds that I was careful to sow. For three years, my crops were poor, but the fourth year, there were so many ears of corn that I was sure never to be short of grain. To grind it, I made a heavy pestle. To sieve the flour, I used an old scarf, and instead of an oven, I used stones brought to white heat. My bread had a fine appearance, and it was not without some pride that I ate it for the first time. One morning, as I was going through the woods, I caught a parrot. I tamed it, and after a few months it could pronounce my name, as well as a few sentences which I had very patiently taught it. I was in the fourth year of my stay on the island when I decided to visit a tiny islet which lay some three leagues away. I cut down a big tree and hollowed out the trunk to make a canoe, but I made it so big and heavy that I was unable to launch it. I then made a smaller one which turned out to be perfectly satisfactory. All this, in addition to the other things I was doing, took me two more years. As soon as my boat was finished, I put out to sea. But almost immediately, a strong current took me so far from the shore that I thought that I was lost forever. I'd nearly given myself over to despair when I noted that the water had a lighter color and that the current was less strong. Filled with inexpressible joy, I rode as hard as I could towards my dear island that I thought never to see again. Exhausted, I flung myself down on the ground and fell into a disturbed sleep. A voice woke me. Robinson, Robinson Crusoe, where have you been? Where have you been? Oh, Robinson Crusoe. It was my parrot. I took him on my wrist and went back to my house where I spent several uneventful years. 
For a long time, I had dreamed of breeding a herd of goats. I dug traps, and I was lucky enough to catch a big he-goat and three nanny goats, which I put into my enclosure. At the end of two years, I had a herd of 43 animals. With the goat's milk, I made butter and cheese, and with the skins, I made myself clothes, as well as a hat, a rather curious shape. Certainly was unlike any hat that had ever been seen on the head of an Englishman before. One day, some 16 years after being shipwrecked, I discovered in the sand the marks of several bare feet. Footprints of savages. There was no doubt of it. Filled with fear, I ran back to my house barricaded myself in, loaded all my weapons and prepared to fight it out to my last breath. But the savages did not discover my retreat and I found no further sign of their presence for a further seven years. I'd almost forgotten about them when about dawn one morning I saw a light shining on the shore. Looking through my telescope I made out nine savages dancing round their fire in what seemed to be some sort of ritual dance. Going onto the shore after their departure, I shuddered with horror on discovering the remains of a horrible feast of human flesh. I decided to wipe them out if they came on my island again. Such was my horror. Two more years went by without them reappearing. And then, one day, about 30 cannibals came on shore, pushing two prisoners in front of them. They felled the first of the prisoners and immediately tore him to pieces for their informal banquet, while the second stood waiting his turn. Suddenly, escaping from his guards, he ran away as fast as he could, closely followed by two of his enemies. I decided to save him, and jumping from my hiding place, I sprang at the nearest of the pursuers felling him with the butt of my gun. The second stopped to take aim at me with his bow and arrow, but I blew his brains out with a bullet. Terrified by the noise of my gun, the fugitive threw himself at my feet, begging me for mercy. Reassured by my attitude, he kissed my hands and placed my foot on his head as a sign of submission. As for the savages, they had been terrified by my intervention and lost no time in putting out to sea. To commemorate the day, I gave the man I had saved the name of Friday. He was young, well built, with a fairly light skin, and he seemed intelligent. I taught him my language, and at the end of three years, he knew enough words for us to be able to understand each other perfectly. What is it? Oh, over there. One, two, three, canoes. Savages come to eat us. Courage, Friday. Do you know how to fight? Me shoot with gun. But many come, very many. I'm ready to risk my life for you. Are you ready to do the same for me? When master say die, me die. Follow me then. Come on. Hey, stop. It's hide under the trees. There are at least 20 of them. And there are two prisoners. They go eat prisoners. One of the prisoners is a white man. We must save him. Are you ready? Yes, master. Fire! Follow me! Are you hurt, sir? <laughs> no, thanks to heaven. Take this gun, then, and let's give these devils something to think about. With pleasure. We must have killed about ten of them. <laughs> the others are fleeing in their canoes. My name is Fernandez. I owe my life to you, senor. But where's Friday? I hope he hasn't been hurt. Friday! 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 Isn't that him talking to my fellow prisoner? Oh, yes, he must be questioning him. My yoko, yali kiki, tant montu, tanti kiki, yoko kiskis, piti kili, alu kiki, kataku, glog, glog, kiskis. 
Pelegato. You to talk about to kiss kiss. What have you been saying to the prisoner? Do you know him? Yes, master. Me know him. Much like he my father. How did you fall into the hands of these cannibals, Senor Fernandez? Uh, we were on our way from the Rio de la Plata when our ship was wrecked. We reached an island and all my companions were massacred. I would have met the same fate if it had not been for you. Master, master, big ship, he arrived. A big huh? ship? Well, let's go and see, Senor Fernandez. Look, it's an English ship. They've sent a boat out to the shore. They've got a prisoner. English? They eat prisoners too? Whoa, lads, let's have a look around the island. What about the prisoner? Don't you worry about him. He won't get away. <laughs> <laughs> Drink this rum, sir. You'll feel better after it. Thank you. Uh, that's better. I'm Captain Johnson. My crew have mutinied, led by those rascals Atkins and Walcott. They've left me on this island to die of starvation. I can help you, Captain, but on two conditions. Oh, let me hear them, sir. First condition? Hmm? As long as you're on this island, you're under my command. Aye. Second condition, if we get onto the boat, you take me to England with Friday, and you don't ask anything for our passage. You have my word of honor, sir. The captain's disappeared. Oh, the devil take him. Come on, all of you. We'll get back to the ship and raise anchor. Aye. Aye. I've got a plan, Captain. All you've got to do is to back me up in what I say. And you as well, Senor Fernandez. Si, Senor. Leave it to me. Don't move or I fire. Who's he? I am the governor of the island. The governor dressed in goat skin. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 50 well-armed men. If you resist, you'll be hanged. Senor Fernandez. Si, Senor. Take command of the troops and surround the mutineers. See then. I say, lads, this looks bad. Those that give themselves up will be spared. The others know what's coming to them. You won't get me alive. Yeah, there's the captain. Walk on. Try it. Don't do that, Atkins. Yeah, what's the matter with you, Bradley? You go mad or something? It Let me go. It was that we leave the captain on the island. Nothing was said about killing him. We are not murderers. Oh, yeah, that Everything that's happened has happened because of Walcott and Atkins. That's right, isn't it? Aye, aye, aye I say right. we ought to ask the captain to come back on board and take charge of the ship again. Will you come, Captain? I accept, Bradley. What about you others? Now that goes for us too, aye, Captain. Aye, 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 if your conduct's absolutely exemplary, I may forget everything that's happened. Oh, aye, 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 aye. Now, let's get back to the ship. We're making for London. Happy go England with master. <laughs> go England, go England. <laughs> yes, yes, you're coming as well, Paul. You know miss your island? Yes, perhaps a little. I've spent 28 years on it, but London's a beautiful town. You'll see, Friday, big houses, well-dressed men, and streets full of laughter, and people everywhere, <laughs> people. Beep. 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 Beep.